I believe I'm live and as usual I have not muted the chat where's my mute button bear with have I muted myself now I think I've muted myself good morning plainly not <laughs> mute there we go now I have <laughs> good morning it's Sunday it's the 3rd of December good morning Mrs Happy Daffy Michelle um, I didn't live stream last Sunday. I took my father to a military thing instead, so um, didn't get to live stream or, or car boot or whatever. Good morning, the Rachel Life. That's a new name that I don't think I've seen before. If, if, I, if I have seen before, I'm sorry. I'm very forgetful. Excuse me. <coughs> Good morning to those of you who have just tuned in in time to watch me coughing a lung up. Good morning, Lolly, Adam Kelsey, Daisy May, Rachel Roberts. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Welcome to the Carla Dies Live on Air show. <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Good morning, Darren. Darren, Darren, the ace moderator. Oh, I've got very bad connection already. That's that's a record. That's that's two seconds in. Uh, the Rachel the Rachel Life says I'm Rachel Wood from the group. It's hi Rachel. Uh, Keris Thomas. Good morning, <laughs> Adam Kelsey. Professional as always. This is the level of professionality that you expect. Professionalism that you expect from me. Paul Mary, Jill Williams, Katie Jarvis. Good morning, everyone. Daisy May says you had a cheeky McDonald's this morning. We did have a cheeky McDonald's. We usually go for breakfast after the car boot, but it was just me and my son this morning, and he wanted to get back and get on with some stuff, so we um, we got a cheeky McDonald's drive through instead. And Mrs. Happy Daffy Michelle says she loves my new storage area, not as much as I love it. I'm so excited. Literally, like a two-year-old, like, like Christmas morning when you're two. I'm like... <laughs> So yeah, really, really pleased. A very small haul today. Lex Oliver says, yay, it's the Carla show. Um, you also have to excuse my kind of scraggly car boot clothing, cold this morning, generally looking estateness. That's just how I look. There's no point trying to pretend otherwise. I'm not glamorous and there's no point trying to pretend I am. So yeah, small haul. Quite a big car boot, but um, I wasn't feeling very great. I woke up this morning, not that you can tell now because I'm fine now, but I had one of those headaches that you don't know you've got until you get up. So I woke up, lying there, looking at the ceiling, feeling fine. Swung my legs around out the bed, stood up and went, oh, that's a bad head. Oh, dear. So stumbled off. The I was I was boiling as well. I was so hot. I was absolutely, I was like an, an inferno. Went to the car boot, potted around a bit. Um, and once I'd had something to eat, I was OK, you know, and the headache's nearly gone. But because of that, while I was at the car boot, I didn't really feel like I couldn't bend. Every time I bent down, my head was like, boo, boo, boo. So I didn't bend and mummage very much. Um, Lolly France says, I might have to catch this later. I'm off to a jumble sale. Oh, you lucky. Th I, we don't get jumble sales around here. I don't know why. I'm in a big city. The place should be stuffed to the brim with jumble sales. And yet we hardly ever. I've been to one in like two years. Um, falling on a bruise. Andrea. <laughs> good morning, Andrea. Missy Moo. Good morning to you too. And Stee. Couldn't you have parcel delivered on a Sunday? Steve says, um, he's just had a parcel delivered. I'm a diamond. I am a diamond. Twinkle, twinkle. Lacey's my biggest fan now. Um, you're welcome, Steve. But I didn't expect you to get it on a Sunday. I'm, I'm quite impressed with her and me for a change. They've um, they've not they've not let us down for once. So, yeah, I'm really I'm gl really glad it's arrived safe. And Andrea says she doesn't get jumble sales either. It's not just me, then. Rachel Life says a Mackie D's always sorts a headache. Yeah, it might have been a dehydration headache. Sorry, I'm talking to several different... Daisy says it might have been a dehydration headache, and that's possible as well, although I do tend to drink Pepsi Max through the night, like 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 an addict does. So, yeah, I did pick up a few bits. I didn't spend very much. I think I probably spent about 20 quid all in. And I'm bloody freezing now. I haven't been like an inferno earlier on. I'm now like a flipping ice cube. So, first thing I bought, which is probably my fail of the day. Good morning, Lainey Ray. Uh, first thing I bought is this. It's the um, the Seiko concise concise cons a thing, concise Oxford Dictionary electronic thing, and it it's got dictionary thesaurus spelling, something else, problem solver thing like that. But although it works, when you switch it on, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that the screen is somewhat interfered with there's a there's a line across the middle where it's not showing properly so i think that's going to affect my resale value i don't think it will prevent it selling but i think it's gonna oh it's gonna it's gonna affect the value and i'm not technical enough to mend it it was two pounds 
And the reason I bought it, hi Karen, Karen says she'll catch later, she's out picking up stock and she loves my loft, thank you, I'm really pleased with it too. And Sib K's in, good morning Sib K. Um, the reason I paid, bought two quid and paid for it was because after the guy had gone off, found a little screwdriver to undo the thing, put the batteries in and brought it back to show me. I felt, I felt kind of obliged to buy it even though I didn't really want it. Soft touch, soft touch at the car boot sale. So that's my first two quid spend there. Uh, Retro Vintage 65 is in, hi Jimmy. Uh, I don't think I've missed it. If I've missed anyone, I'm very sorry. It's not deliberate. I'm not deliberately excluding you. I just, I'm just an old fart and, and can't keep up. I bought this purse. It's not a particular brand, as far as I can tell. Oh, it is. It's Band Apparel. There we go. Just in there. I don't. Can you make that out? Just there. It says Band. Just under my finger there. Elaine is in. Good morning, Elaine. And Pink Nolan ninety. And Tracy Pink. Woman well, we Pink this morning. So yeah, it's Band Apparel. It's skulls and roses and I should have realised it was Band of Power because do you remember I had that Band of Power jacket a few weeks ago and it had the same little skull tag on it so I should have realised that. £1.50, she wouldn't come down. It's quite funny, I said to her how much, she said £1.50. Would she take a pound? No, she was sticking at £1.50 so I gave her a £2 and said okay then and she put the £2 in her pocket and said thank you. And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll take the 50p change, please. I <laughs> can't hammer you down to a quid. I'm done if I'm paying two. So £1.50. There'll, there'll probably be a tenner in that. Maybe more. Who knows? It's in brand new condition. It's not been used. Uh, yeah, Elaine says, glad to catch you live and in the flesh at last. And Pink Nola says, imagine all the stock I can buy now. Exactly. Look at all my expansion space. <laughs> I've got to run the world. Or something. Does anyone know how I can change my YouTube name? I know you can do it, but I don't know how. Somebody in the, somebody in the chat hopefully will tell you. She says this one, Pink Nolan 90. Does anyone know how I can change my YouTube name? This one is very embarrassing. I made it when I was a teenager with pink hair. <laughs> um, I don't know, but somebody, I, I, know, I know I've seen people change their YouTube name, so I know it can be done. I don't know how to do it. Somebody will tell you, I'm sure. I got... A pocket scrabble, brand new and unused, all all new and unused, unused inside, 50p. They'll go for a tenner every day of the week. They go sell very quickly as well. Oh, Izzy's House of Fun says it's in settings to change your name. It's easy. And Andrea says she's 50 with pink hair, so there's no reason why you shouldn't have pink hair at any age. And Laney Ray hasn't seen my loft yet. She feels like she's missing out. I only put it up last night, the loft video. It's only about seven minutes long, and it's just seven minutes of me going, oh, look at my loft, oh, look at my loft. Ooh. So you're not miss much. <laughs> Had a scary hole in the floor. I got Hotel Trans Transylvania 1 and 2. This is for me <laughs> because I'm seven. <laughs> this is because we, on our, on, our, um, on our recent holiday to Turkey, we had a private transfer because our, our hotel was in the back of beyond. And they put, they had, it was the kind that has a television in the back of the car and they put this on. And we were watching it quite merrily and then we arrived at our destination with about 20 minutes of the film still to go. So we don't know how it ends. That was Hotel Transylvania 2. And then my friends who were with me said, well, we haven't even seen Hotel Transylvania 1, which I had. But I saw this, it was 50p. So now perhaps we'll have a, a holiday reunion movie night and get people around to watch it. Um, OK, so Pink Nolan now knows how to change your name. And Jimmy's helping as well, I see. And, and see, everybody, everybody knows how to do stuff. You're fantastic. Uh, Lainey says, I'll have to do another once I fill it. It's at the loft. I've already started filling it, Lainey. It's already, it's already started filling it up. And and Pink Nola is now backtracking and saying her hair is not embarrassing at all. It's just the name. <laughs> and Deb Stevens is in. Morning, Deb. How are you? I did um, consider messaging you this morning, but I didn't know whether you might be in bed already. So we weren't out very long either. I got a Harry Potter set for £1.50. Um... I'm still making up bundles and, and clearing my stock out, but since it was £1.50 for the four, I thought I might as well might as well bag that. Um, Adam says he's never had pink hair or blue and he feels like he's missing out. Have you still got hair, Adam? Because, you know, for certain blokes of a certain age, I don't know how old you are, but you might just be glad to have hair at this point, let alone regardless of colour. Mine's very grey. And Lainey's only, only, only ever had natural coloured hair. I did have bright orange hair for a period in my mid-teens, when I was about 16, 17, it wasn't deliberate, I had accidental orange hair. I was dyeing it blonde, and to go from dark to blonde it has to go through orange, which is logical. But I didn't really logically think of that. I'm not answering you, Darren. I'm not digging this hole, Darren. <laughs> I didn't 
think about it having to go through orange to get to blonde. So when I looked in the mirror, it got orange. I panicked and washed it off and had orange hair for months. <laughs> Adam Kelsey, Carla, didn't you say you would never buy any more Harry Potter DVDs? I am just buying the ones that I need to finish up the bundles. So I have a list on my phone. I can't show you because I'm filming on my phone, but I've got the keep app on my phone. I've got a list of how many of each I need to complete the bundle. And all of these were in it bar one. So for £1.50, it was worth, it was worth doing. Eleni Ray says she's done the same and had a copper orange. Yeah, absolutely dreadful hair I had for about six months just because I panicked and washed it off too soon. Uh, Deb says she's dropped an hour on a Sunday morning so she was home at six. So did you go to bed at six and have you just got back up or have you not been to bed? Uh, Karin's in. Good morning, Karin. And Elaine's other half has suggested that she had the, had the loft boarded out for her eBay business. She's so excited. Yes, I know exactly how you feel. I've been lucky. Ours was boarded out a few years ago. It's been boarded both floorboards and the insulation above but you know the roof's been boarded as well so it's not too cold up there and Deb has been in bed and she's just got back up and Adam's not sure if he's a gentleman but he knows how old he is <laughs> Daniel Warren's in good morning Darren Daniel even sorry I forgot, lost the loss of ability to speak this for a pound I've already got one of these and um, so when I saw this I thought I'd buy another one I actually took an, well I had an offer come in on this last night I got it listed at 12.99 Plus postage, and somebody sent me an offer, and they've done that thing where they think mm. they can. Take... Oh, ching, hi. Mm. Just sold something. They think they can take the um, the postage out within the offer. So they sent me an offer, and it said ten pound. And in the little message bit, it said including second class postage. Well, I don't do second class postage. I post it the way I want to post it. And you're certainly not having a twelve ninety nine plus postage item for a tenner, because that means I'm selling it to you for about four quid. You know. And, um, and no, just no. So I, I sent back, you can't take the postage out, blah, blah. But when I saw another one this morning, I thought I'd buy it anyway for a pound. So I haven't checked it yet to make sure all the pieces are there, but I will do. And yeah, Adam's pointed out that now I have a single Harry Potter DVD that I need to sell in a new bundle. Yes, I know. <laughs> just that one that's going to be a problem. Maybe I'll give it away. Maybe I'll give it to some of Christmas. Deb, you're getting one. Deb Stevens, you're getting one random Harry Potter film that you might not want for Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> This was, um, you know, when you're just on your, just on your, on your way out and, and there's that last thing. What did I sell? Bear with me and I will tell you. What did I sell? What did I sell? Awaiting dispatch. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I sold two Fime and Sam DVDs for £1.99. Hooray! And in fairness, I've had them a very long time. I'm going to be glad to see the back of them. <laughs> This was, I was just leaving the car boot, so I spotted this. It was one of those people who got a very, very crowded stall, and this was kind of lost in amongst it, and that, I think that's why it survived so long. So this is the Roald Dahl 10 Fizz Whizzing audiobook set. I paid £2. These sell for about 20-ish. So that was, that was one of those last minute, ooh, I'll have that. Thank you. My hands are so cold. <sighs> really, really cold. This one is another bargain. This is something it might not occur to people to look at or pick up. This is ready cut wool. It is used for rug making. It comes in little bales like this. Really kind of tightly packed. You don't want to start poking it because if it comes out of its bale, it goes, pfft. it's all little pieces that are about this long. So all of it, each individual strand is pre-cut to about this length. Yes, Deb, it does. Yeah. Um, yeah, each, each strand is pre-cut and I've got 17 of these little bales in this bag cost me a quid that was that should get me best part of 20 quid for that so that's something that's definitely worth looking out for people do buy it i've only got two things left to show you and then i'll be gone <laughs> i got um some port Mirian coasters i picked them up just because i like the look of them really sorry i think i've got ready cut wool in my mouth <laughs> Top tip, never poke your stock. Absolutely. <laughs> um, these are, yeah, Port, Port Marion, which um, make very nice pottery coasters, and they are cats. So we've got, sorry, to, to, my eyesight is terrible. We've got grinning cats, posh cats, skinny cats, tabby cats, Cuddly cats. That's me. I'm a cuddly cat. I'm that shape as well. And shy cats. I thought they were really nice. Um, they were... With the next item I paid... If you include this, I paid 
two pounds for all of this she wanted the next item is books she wanted 150 for the books and a pound for those and i gave her two quid for all of it so so yes yeah, so they worked out about 50p if you call these 50p each three david walliam books walliams books all in nice condition paperbacks not in as good condition as the hardbacks i sold earlier this week but still in nice condition i've got uh, the boy in the dress rat burger and awful auntie three of those for one pound fifty and that's it that's it i didn't buy a lot i've realized <laughs> i've realized that in the in the process of sorting out the loft and moving the stuff up i've realized just how much stuff i've got that isn't listed I've got more than I more than I realised unlisted stock, which meant that although I, I'm still going to the car boots because, as I said to my son, if you don't go, there's that kind of like. But what if I what if the what if the week that I don't go is the is the week that the amazing thing is there? You know, the amazing thing that would have made me a fortune. So I'm still going, but I'm not feeling the pressure to buy a load of stuff because I've got enough stock enough stock to work through. I've got still here. All this is unlisted still. That's unlisted and quite a lot of the stuff that's up on top of the unit is unlisted. This unit now is almost empty. The only two cubes that have stuff in now are these two. This has been emptied. It's um, all gone upstairs and that that unit's going to go, it's going to be for sale. I'm going to sell that because I want more space back in my room. I want my bedroom to be my room again. I want to be able to not feel oppressed by the contents of my bedroom. Um... Yeah, so I'm going to sell that big unit. Probably going to put it on an auction on eBay. Um, unless I think Deb Steves is now saying how much. Deb, you can come over and talk to me about it if you want. <laughs> but yeah, so that's going to go. It's, um, they're, in fact, they're fantastic units. But I don't need... That's a 25. That's a 16. There's another 8 up top there. I've got another 5 one over there. That's 25, 30, 46. I've got 54 cubes in this room. 54 cubes. I don't need 54 cubes in one bedroom. Not, like I said, no wonder I'm feeling the press. On top of that, I've got three chests of drawers, a king-size bed, a desk, a bedside cabinet, a mini fridge in the corner. And this room is only about 12 foot square. It's, it, you know, it's just, bah, I, no wonder I feel like the walls are closing in on me. I can't move. I've got an L-shaped space around my bed to walk in and that's it. So some of it's got to go. Uh, Peter Ray's just joined us. Good morning, Peter. So yeah, some of it, some of it has to go and, um, and just leave me more space to breathe, some breathing room. So yeah, I didn't buy a great deal. I'm pleased with what I've got. I only spent about 20 quid all in. I was pleased with my McDonald's breakfast. That was good too. Adam Kelsey says, "Do you have a TARDIS for a bedroom?" I wish I had. Like I said, it's it's very carefully arranged. There is not an inch of space. The, you can see very little of the walls in here, and it's um, it, it's just oppressive. It's not really, it's not a restful bedroom where you go to to relax. It's just kind of, yeah. But it's going to get better. Like I said, it's going to go up to the loft. I'm keeping... These ones will stay. This little corner will pretty much stay how it looks now. Because these ones, these have got clothes in. And they work really, really best in there. Karin, I'll, I, I will re reply to that in just two seconds. And I've, I've noticed you've said that and I will reply. So yeah, the clothes work best in these. There's no question about that. I thought about taking them upstairs. The cube units can't go up into the loft. I mean, they, they will fit. They could be dismantled up there, but there's nowhere up there with enough height for them to stand without them being in my way because of it being a sloping ceiling. So the clothing will stay down here. But I'm going to empty these out. Some of these have just got junk in and and kind of rearrange the clothing a bit better. This unit's going to go. My chest of drawers can come back over here. My bed can turn back around because at the moment my bed's rammed up against the wall. And I'm just going to, it's going to feel a bit more, just a bit more livable. So, Karin's question is, did I see your £1 challenge? Karin, I did see them. Have you sold? Have any of them sold? Is anyone out there who is joined in with the £1 challenge actually sold any of their £1? I, I haven't. My £1 challenge at the moment, I haven't even bothered doing a 1st of December update because I haven't sold anything. <laughs> uh, Andrea says, don't you have to be careful with thinner floor beams in lofts? I believe you do. That's another reason not to take too much weight up there and to, and to put... Like I said, these are heavy, so that's another reason why I'd be very careful. They would have to go... You'd have to choose very particular which beams to put them on and it just wouldn't work. just wouldn't work. 
So no, Carmen hasn't sold her one pound, one pound items. I haven't either. Like I said, nothing sold yet. So my my one pound challenge didn't. Excuse me, while I just get in the way of it. Oh. Resolutely empty. Not a bean in there. But I believe I believe in my dress that I bought. It's quite funny because some of the other items that I bought for a pound since have gone for a fortune. Well, not a fortune. I'm not sitting there going, whoa, look at all my moolah. But you know what I mean? They've sold. So maybe I, maybe I chose the wrong item to put into my challenge. But it's done. Um, Elaine says, I'm taking part in the one pound challenge, but my first item hasn't sold. Do you have to sell your first before listening? You have to sell your first before even buying another. You have to sell your first one pound item and then take your pound and buy another. So you can't even have another pound item stacked up ready because that's cheating that's kind of like you could just cherry pick all the best stuff you see yeah so this um, in fairness you can make your own rules for your one pound challenge these are the rules that i have made for my one pound challenge and these are the rules that i'm going to stick by is that i have to sell my first one pound item and then use a pound from the profits to buy another one sorry i've just caught just got myself caught in the um chat Deb Stevens, at one point you said all floor. What, what, all floor what? Was all, what was the words all floor in relation to? No idea. So yeah, I have to sell my first item. It has not sold. Nothing has happened. At this rate, Christmas 2018 will have nothing in it. Darren, the item has to be exactly one pound. You have to buy a one pound item. But again, you can make your own rules. Elaine says, I'm cheating as I did pick up another item this week, slapping myself on this. You can still list that item and sell it separately. Like I said, at the end of the day, this is my £1 challenge that I set for myself. I didn't I didn't set it for, for all of you guys to abide by my rules. If you want to change the rules for what suits you, then it's absolutely up to you, isn't it? You know, I'm doing I'm doing it by, by the book for myself because otherwise I feel like I'm cheating myself. Uh, Darren said, can I sell 250p items? I know that Karin's got 250p items. Again, you can do whatever you want. It's your life. You are a big boy, Darren, and you can do whatever suits you. The bedroom only has small floor space and no wall space. Which bedroom, Deb? Mine or yours? I don't know what we're randomly talking about. I think we're talking about mine. I've got no floor space at all and no wall space. Just, yeah. You basically have to levitate your way around my bedroom. But luckily there's only me that bothers trying. Yeah, Dev says mine, yeah. So yeah, like I said, at the end of the day, you can set your challenge rules up to whatever suits you and do it whatever way suits you best. This is just what I wanted to do for me. Um, I'm also massively behind in my challenge with Caroline. That's not going well either. Caroline is severely kicking my butt. Um, I have sold one of my challenge items, but the lady hasn't paid yet. She sent me a message this morning saying she'll be paying tomorrow. So hopefully she does. And that should hopefully kickstart me again. But yeah, Caroline's on like £5,000 or something like that already. And I'm on note. Uh, yeah, Daisy May says she's starting the challenge on January the 1st. She's going to track the first item she buys. And then when that's sold, go with the next item she buys after it sells. And Karen says she's a rebel. She looks like a rebel. You look, you only got to look at Karen Fisher and go, yeah, there's a rebel right there. I'm buffering, aren't I? I'm buffering on screen. Adam, question, will you stop going to car boots nearer to Crimbo? I will go to them as long as they are there. Our car boot, I've done with over, 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 over listening. What's over listening? That's not a thing. Eavesdropping, overhearing. <laughs> a conversation between two of the stallholders today and they were saying that there, there will be two weeks where it's closed over Christmas. So I won't be going when it's shut on account of the fact that I'll be stood there on my own like a burk. But if it's open, I go. Like I said, the, you just feel like the one you miss, the one you don't go... Sorry, I've, I've been picking away at my finger and I've made it bleed. The one that you miss and don't go to will be the one where something marvellous was there. The one where the one where there'd be a Mewtwo camera, which I still have never found. So, other people are finding Mewtwo cameras. I found, I found a Mew3. I was very excited when I found my Mew3, but not a Mewtwo. I might even be pronouncing that wrongly. So what's everybody else been up to? People in the chat, have you um have you had a good week? Have you have you have you had good sales? I had a very very slow start to the week. It's picked up reasonably well the last couple of days. Lex Oliver, are the car boots betterer? Betterer, I love betterer after Christmas. Yeah, I think it's theoretically people have got more stuff to shift after Christmas because they want to get rid of some of their old stuff to make room for their new stuff. But on the other side of the coin, people aren't in such a hurry to make any money after Christmas 
because they're not they haven't got that feeling of urgency um adam kelsey they're open late they're adam they're open all year round they will close over christmas but they're open all year round this particular one it's mostly indoors it's done in two big barns on a on a farmyard um on, on two big barns on the courtyard outside and it will it runs all year round so i'm very lucky daisy may says she found a mew a mew one and Karen Fisher's sold a Ted Baker top that she had on a red leather jacket this weekend. That's good, Karen. I'm glad you got the sales coming in. And um, I did I did watch your video and, and I just want to say that I sympathise with your health issues and that you seem to be firing on nicely. And I feel sorry for your poor husband who's gradually losing his side of the bedroom, <laughs> his side of the office. <laughs> um, Darren says, think back to a terrible car boot you've been to and then any time you miss a booty, assume it's that one. That's possible, yeah. Like I said, I think you just think that the, the one time I don't go is bound to be the time that will be something amazing. That You know, a ghost castle, a hero quest. I've never found those either. Adam says he's not listed anything for a couple of months due to his 9 to 5 becoming more like a 9 till nine till 10 or 11. And Karen says the husband's not happy about losing his share of the, his share of the office space. Bless him. Bless his little cotton socks. Buy him something nice for Crimble. Pink Nola 90 says slow sales this week, so I've taken the time to reorganise my eBay room. I'm very happy, but I've realised I have a hideous amount of unlisted clothing too. Taken out all the coats and the party dresses to list. I was surprised by how much stuff I've got that's not listed. Kind of surprised, like you knew really. You, you kind of, I, I knew really it was there and it wasn't listed, but it was easy to ignore when it was out of sight, out of mind. Elaine says she's having a slow week, but she's not too worried. She's got terrible hand pain. Sorry about that, Elaine. Been to a private physio and she's got a cross between RSI and carpal tunnel. Oh, look, Mo's just appeared in the background. Hi, Mo. Um, give me a baby. Uh, RSI and carpal tunnel. Even listing using the iPad is painful and packing. Oh, Elaine, I'm really sorry about that. This is Mo. She's my um, my evil cat, aren't you? Shmoly. Camera. There we go. Schmoly, evil schmo. She won't stay. She'll be gone. There we go. She's off. She's not a cuddle cat. She's really not. She'll let you pick her up. There'll be like a two second purr and then she's like, get off. I'm going. Uh, Deb Stevens, you won't want to rent one of my bedrooms now. Then your loft is sorted. Lol. Your bedrooms are full of your children, Deb. You've noticed the, the, those great big men hanging around the house. They live there in those bedrooms. I don't know what you think they are. I don't know whether you thought they were just like some kind of spectres that was wandering around. And Karen says that hot and cold will relieve Elaine's pain. Hot and cold, uh, what, as in like hot water and cold water, or? Don't know. Don't know. Mystery to me. I have been noticing in the cold weather that I've got kind of some sort of arthritis thing across my knuckles, and I really noticed that. That's been like... Ugh. Not this morning, though. This morning when I was an inferno, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't complaining about the cold then. I was melting. I sat here, 7 o'clock this morning. I was about to get dressed. I'm sat in my pyjamas on the edge of the bed with the window open going... <sighs> it's got to be time of life, hasn't it? It's got to be some kind of horrible... Yeah, horrible time of life thing. Yeah, Mo's sitting in the doorway now, hanging out in the background. <laughs> Shmo. Shmoly Mo. What are you doing? Hey, you coming back in? She's a funny cat. Yeah, but when I pick you up... Come here. Oh. There, look. People look. Look, look. People like cats. I don't know why. Because you're dreadful. But people do like cats. And Deb wants Buddy. Buddy is on the bed, camouflaged in a, in a blanket that's almost the same colour as him, glaring at Mo. Mo's now on the desk. Kai's come up to find out why I'm talking to Mo. We've now got a full set. Hey, Kai. Hey, mate. You right? Yes, yeah, so we've now got a full set of animals. They're all here now. <laughs> and Deb says stop leaning in the chair yeah I've, Deb and I have broken several office chairs between us by leaning over sideways to pick things up we keep saying we've got to stop doing that Adam Kelsey do you find it's really only dealers at the car boots this time of year uh, certainly I would say um, a higher proportion are the familiar faces but I don't. We don't have a lot of antiques dealers at our car boot there's a couple of you know the guys that you just kind of tend to wander, wander past but but um, not really, like I said, car boot dealers, we get quite a lot of, I think the kind of guys that get charity shop stuff, you know, kind of guys that do house clearances, quite a lot of those. And that's quite useful to me. So not so many little independent people tidying out their, their junk, but which are obviously the best ones. Karen says she's glad Monty isn't there and he barks at cats on the TV. <laughs> 
and Andrea says I get that menopausal wrist pains for a week every month you might be getting that Carl I didn't really get menopausal wrist pains being a woman's shit honestly you men don't know you're born you have a fantastic life compared to us we suffer we really suffer <laughs> and Darren's on his fourth office chair is that from leaning over sideways Wait, why don't we learn that if you lean over sideways the stem snaps I have found myself in a heap on the floor several times because the chair has gone one way and I've gone the other also happened to me in um Bella Italia once they had wooden chairs wooden chair legs on a wooden floor and there was I wanted the salt from the table behind. There was, there was, we were hardly anybody in there and there was nobody on the table behind. I wanted the salt. And so I leant back on my chair to reach the salt from the table behind. And as I leant back, my chair went one way. I went the other. <laughs> I was under the table behind. I landed under the table behind on my back. Hysterical with laughter. People are trying to pick me up. I'm, I'm, t I'm laughing far too much to get up. The staff are having a panic attack in case I've hurt myself. The people who are with me, because all of my friends are evil bastards who don't care, were just dying. We're just wetting themselves. So I was just led on the floor in, in a, just a hysterical heap, with laughing like a laughing like a drain. We've just been joined by Lisa Fenn and by Heather the Treasure Pirate. So morning, guys. Lady Ray says I have a profiling mattress which is moving me away from the keyboard. I don't know what a profiling mattress is and I don't understand. I'm, I'm, I feel sure that, Lainey, you've mentioned a medical condition before, but I'm, so I'm, my brain is like a it's, it's like a sponge. So many holes in it, things just fall out. So I'm sorry if I'm misunderstanding what you meant there. Darren says it goes lean, crack, worried, look, fall, laugh, get up. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and Lady Lolly's joined us. Good morning, Lady Lolly. So, um, yeah, so the, these guys have just arrived. I've done my um, little haul. It really wasn't very big this morning. Heather's got flu. Sorry, Heather. Um, she says, I have flu, so not going anywhere. Note to self, get flu job next year. I had a letter from my doctor saying, um, Dear Miss Jenkins, due to your medical condition, we advise you to have a flu job. I was like, I haven't got a medical condition. Or at least I, if I have, you haven't told me about it. Now I'm a bit worried about what they know that I don't. <laughs> and Peter Ray's off soon because he's got family around today. I'm just debating whether to cook a roast dinner. I don't think I can be bothered. Only me and Anthony. Natalie's at work. I think she's at work until closing time today. Yeah, don't think I can be bothered to cook. I should probably do some laundry. Don't think I can bother to do that either. Definitely going to do some listing. I'm going to crack on new system. Stuff comes in, stuff gets listed, stuff goes up. That's the new plan. Adam says that's a worry. Is that me cooking a roast dinner that's a worry or the fact that I've got an unexplained medical condition? <laughs> And uh, smart, uh, Darren says, won't they be happy with the pot noodle each? You know what they really like? Those horrible pasta and sauce things. Cheese and broccoli pasta and sauce out of a packet that smells like vomit. Uh. Lisa Fenn, I had the same letter. I have type 2 diabetes. I replied telling them whether they could stick their flu jab. I'd be interested to know if I've got type 2 diabetes and nobody's mentioned it. Peter Ray, do you cook Christmas dinner? I normally cook Christmas dinner. This year I'm not. This year we're going out for Christmas dinner for the first time in about 20 years. But I do normally cook Christmas dinner. I can cook. I'm, I'm, I'm a reasonably good cook. I just can't be bothered. <laughs> and Karen's having, if it's, if it's in the freezer, that's what I'm having. And Deb says she'll come over for food. Well, I haven't cooked any food, Deb, so don't run. I'd have to go and buy something because everything that's in the freezer is still frozen on account of that's how the freezer works. I'd have to go and buy meat and then I'd have to cook it. I don't think I'd be bothered. Sorry, Deb, not today. But I will invite you over for a roast dinner sometime soon. And Darren says, I love those pastas. It's a bit kind of young person's food, isn't it? Pasta slop out of a packet. Don't know, is it? I don't know. Student food. That's the phrase I was looking for. Student food. Lisa says, I'm the same great cook, but can't be honest. I say, I don't mind cooking. I'm I just, I'm fairly good at it. I just can't be bothered. And Karen says, she doesn't have a flu job. It makes her feel rubbish when she has it. I think that's a common thing, that the flu job, make, the flu job makes you feel ill at first, but it's supposed to stop you getting iller, isn't it? My fringe needs cutting, doesn't it? I'm going to get my eight head out. I keep looking at myself in the camera thinking, God, look, I'm lost behind that fringe again. Take the meat out and put it on something metal. It defrosts quicker, really, does it? I didn't know that. I didn't know, didn't know that at all. It's the things you learn. So, um... Yes, I've, I've showed you my little haul. I've, I've had a little... I've bored you all to tears. Lucy T, it may be your BMI. What might be my BMI? The, the, the medical condition. It might be... It, well, they've never offered me a flu jab because I'm fat before. And I've been fat for a long time. 
So I don't know if it's age related. Maybe when you get to a certain age, they put all these things together and go, um, you know, age plus weight plus BMI plus this means you now have a flu job. I don't know. Don't know. Um, Deb, I think next week might be bad for me. Um, I will check, but I think next week might not be any good, any good for me. Lisa, Lisa Fenn, Karin, the jab contains an industrial strength cleaning fluid, formaldehyde, derivative of mercury and chicken embryos, so I'd rather not thanks all the same. It's not, is it? I suppose it could be. And Katie Jarvis says, we call freezer food ferret. I love that. Why well, you haven't done a ferret? I'm going to have to ferret around and see what I can find. <laughs> I like that. What's for dinner? Ferret. Okay, that's brilliant. I'm literally going to adopt that one. We are going to call it Ferret from now on. And Lisa says she's serious. Lisa, I can't even think about that. I'll be ill. The, the idea of injecting people with that is, is quite unpleasant. <laughs> Katie Jarvis. Oh, God. Now the dogs are off. Are you done? No. Buddy. Kai. Kai. You always have to have the last word. Did you have a little loaf at the end? Kai, come here. Come here. Stop being gobshite. That's because somebody's getting their bin in. Somebody in the street is moving their bin. Apparently that's that's beyond the pale. Yeah, Katie Jarvis, you've now put a new word into our family lexicon. That is ferret. Hi, Sib K. I'm sure we saw you earlier on. I'm sure did you come did you come in and go earlier? And Peter K's off. Hi, sorry, Peter. Have a good have a good day with your family, mate. And Sib was in the middle of football, playing or watching? Adam, there is not someone at the door. There's not someone at the door. There is someone moving their dustbin about eight doors up. And my dogs disapprove of this. <laughs> my dogs have got strong opinions about what other people should do. Haven't you? Mouth almighties, both of you. So yeah, I haven't got anything else to say. I think I've said it all. It's been nice chatting to you all. Oh, Lainey has lymphedema because her lymphatic system doesn't work properly. The mattress deflates and inflates so it moves it and also prevents sores since I can't get up at the moment. Right, I think I remember you talking about lymphedema before, yeah. Yeah, that's a really unpleasant condition and I, I really do feel for you with that. I've got um, I've got lumpy legs myself and somebody else said to me once, oh, I think you might have that. And I was like, well, if I have, I don't think I want to know. I don't think I have because I am mobile and I think lymphedema can really really prevent you being mobile as you've said you can't get up at the moment so i don't think mine's lymphedema but i'm really sorry that you're that you're suffering at the moment with that i hope i hope you get i think i think it's one of those conditions that you have highs and lows i believe so if so i hope you feel a bit better soon i hope you find yourself on an up rather than a down soon and um question how many storage boxes do you have 1269 at the last count I don't know. I don't know, Sib, how many storage boxes you have. But I am going. Sib, I'm really I'm sorry that you've just arrived and I'm just leaving, Sib, but it's it's nothing personal. Um But yeah, I'm going to list the stuff that I bought this morning. I'll list this immediately. That Lisa says my loft looks epic. Thank you, Lisa. I'm really pleased with it. So I'm gonna list this stuff immediately, then it's gonna go up into the loft and then it's gonna be photographed and it's gonna be put away, and that's gonna be the new system is get get the chuff on with stuff. That's my new slogan. Get the chuff on with stuff. Lainey says I'm down but just on one side because of the mattress. <laughs> At least just smiling, love. We are down but we are still bloody smiling. Question. Who is your favourite neighbour? Well, I'd like to say Deb Stevens, but... Oh. Um, my favourite neighbour. I think my favourite neighbour is probably Paddy. He's lovely, isn't he, Deb? And Lisa's just noticed the cat. Lisa, you, you, um, you must have missed the bit where the cat was in frame and I was picking up the cat and holding it and cuddling it against its will about 10 minutes ago. So if you watch back, you'll see that. She's called Mo. Um, one of her names is Mo. Mo, Mo, Shmoly Mo, Moline. All sorts, of, all sorts of variations on the word Mo. She is 18 years old. She is evil to the core. Absolutely evil to the core. She rules this house with, a, with a, an iron whip. <laughs> uh, Sib K question where does Deborah Stevens rank on your top 100 people of 2017 she didn't even make the cut she didn't even make the top 100 I mean it was a close thing between Deb Stevens and Donald Trump and then I, I just I had to put Donald in I'm afraid Lisa Fenn I had four cats but I lost both the girls this year Missy was 22 and Myrtle was 19 I thought Mo was doing good at 18 and yours have, yours have gone on longer than that so 
I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm sorry you lost them. It's really sad. I mean, I lost, we've lost three animals in the last couple of years and it really does hurt. Really does. And uh, Deb's very impressed that Donald Trump rates higher in my list of 100 people than she does. <laughs> I'm not here for making Deborah Stevens feel good about herself. I'm not here for that. She's got rod for that. <laughs> right. On that note, and on that on, on two of Sib K's questions, uh, Sib, would you like to get an extra question in just before I go? There it is. There we go. Question. What do you think of the fashion trends of 2018? I have heard that what's going to be big in 2018 is painting yourself blue and going naked. Painting yourself blue and going... We're going back to early Brit. So, woad. Woad is going to be the, the big trend of 2018. And um, if you want to be ahead of the trend, Sib, then you need to pop off and paint yourself blue right now. Well, uh, Ryan's just joined us. Apparently can't wait to see me blue and naked. That's what I look like in the mornings when it's cold in this house and I'm trying to get dressed. <laughs> but yes, woad. Woad is, woad is the hot fashion trend of 2018. And I suggest, Sib K, that you get ahead of the trend and start now. Gold Smurfs? Where, where do gold Smurfs come from? Andrea says, oh good, I've got a box of woad in the loft. <laughs> Do you paint yourself blue or going naked? It depends where you live. That was a ka -ching. It depends where you live. If you live in a cold area, you can, uh, you can save on the paint. Nobody's painting me. I'll paint myself, thank you. Uh, shall I go and see what that ka -ching was? Let's have Luke. Let's have a Luke. That was the ka for an item that I accepted an offer on in the night. A sea salt, sum, su, a sea salt, I can't say that. A sea salt summer shirt. Try saying that when you're drunk. So that's been paid for now. So I need to go and, I need to go and do some picking in my loft, in my loft storage. Uh, Sib K says, I will do if I know what the hell you're saying. Wove, not wove, woad. Woad, W-O-A-D, woad. W-O-A-D, woad. Sib K, Ryan, message you on Instagram. You're an ignorant f. Lainey Ray's now singing Eiffel City. I am blue. Da da dee, da 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 doo, da da dee. Adam Kelsey is blue already. Went on holiday. Has to go from blue to white before going very red. That sounds like my daughter. And Sib K says, now I have to buy Carla's stuff to keep her online. What would you like to buy, Sib? What have, you, what have I got that I could sell you? What are your interests, Sib K? Apart from generally winding people up on the interwebs, what are you into? And now, now, now Sib and Ryan are just having a lovely chat about, about Instagram, which I don't do Instagram, I don't get it. He'd like roller skates. I don't have roller skates, but I do have a delightful pair of Heelys with a heel missing because some bugger ripped me off. Selling the Oxford thing so it can spell woad. <laughs> Would you like to buy these, Sib K? These are delightful, look. They're smashing. They're Heelys, but they're only three Heelys instead of four Heelys. I discovered you can buy spare heels, but they're about 12 quid, which is kind of pointless. I wonder if I can sell them with a heel missing if I just declare it. Ryan says he loves my loft. He makes it sound like you've been kept there. Love that. I love it up here. It's great. It's fine. Can I come out now? <laughs> uh, week off rent for the boy. No, he, I paid him his normal hourly rate. Rather than take a week off his rent, I just paid him his normal hourly rate for the work that he did because obviously he took time off of his he's, he's self-employed self-employed handyman and gardener so he, he wasn't able to work for somebody else while he was working for me so i have no idea what that bit's all about mofo three heavies my right leg is faster anyway so it might be okay oh the heelys <laughs> which foot is it yeah it is the right foot yeah you'll be fine oh, mind you are you a size one sib k unless your feet are a size one then um i don't think they'll work for you i suppose you could just put them on your toes and deb stevens wants Ant to do a job for you what's that deb what you've got what do you want him to do sib k is a midget are statement earrings in next year statement earrings are in this year sib k you're behind yourself you are well behind the times mate you are so out of date it's unbelievable statement earrings are a thing if you're not seeing caroline wearing her flipping curtain tassel earrings i, I mean they suit her they wouldn't suit me 
In the same case as I am size one miracle. In that case, please send payment of fourteen thousand pounds to Carla Jenkins at live.co.uk via PayPal, and these will be in the post to you later today. Pat butcher earrings, yeah. I remember the pat pet pet. <laughs> Clown earrings of 2018's trend. Clown earrings and blue naked people. That's that's what to look out for in 2018. Deborah Stevens. Desk for my new PC if I can get it home. What do you mean if you can get it home? Why wouldn't you be able to get it home? It's at Hot Rods, right? Golden Comedy. Do you have a doorstop? Is there more to that? sentence that random doorstop question have i am i turned two pages at once or something you know when you turn two pages at once in a book and you discover you've no idea what's going on that's how i feel at the moment <laughs> sip k i would love to see what you buy and sell you I don't, I don't really know what you what you're in what your what your bag is well deb anthony will go and fetch it for you if you arrange to go over with him he will he will transport the pc from the other side of town for you uh Ryan, so with the new space up the attic, Carla, what's the plans? 1K listings and more shit, haha. -ha. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Golden Comedy helps us helps the door stop closing, yes. I'm I'm not entirely I'm not entirely sure whether I've come in, in the middle of this somewhere. What bloody door? <laughs> and Karen Fisher, I'm about to throw a pair of suede boots out the window, can't get them clean. What have you tried? What what methods have you tried? The preferred method with suede is a stiff brush over the steam of a hot kettle so you just keep your finger on the kettle boiling and you get the brush on there and you hold it you hold it over the steam and you just brush 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 and so on and so forth it's the steam of the kettle that helps to lift the suede and get the dirt out there we go see i am obviously just here to be useful Suede is a bit cheaper. Did you use a suede brush or just wipe it all with water? I wouldn't use too much water if I were you on suede because it'll go matty and horrible. Bear with me just a second. Darren, where are you when I need you, Darren Smart? Ah, there he is. He's in. Darren's there. Darren's on it. <laughs> Ryan says, have we missed the haul? It was a very small haul. It wasn't a great deal of stuff, but yeah, you have missed it. It took me about 10 minutes at the beginning of this of this ramble to show what I've got. I've got a couple of DVDs, a pocket scrabble, a purse, uh, a Roald Dahl audio book set, some ready cut wool, some books and another chess set. That was it. That's pretty much it. Oh, and a, an ele electronic dictionary thing that isn't quite tickety boo. Question. What do you think of Megan Sparkle? Is that Megan Markle that we're I think she, I'm sure she's lovely. I like Harry. I think he's a good lad. I think both of them are good lads, but William's a bit of an old man, isn't he? But I think Harry's a good lad. He's obviously got a decent sense of humour. He's not taking himself too seriously. He's done some good stuff. He's worked hard. He went and he went and did his bit of service and um Sorry, Barry, there we go. Um Lost me, lost me trying to thought. Yeah, he went over there and did his bit of service and, and apparently just mucked in just like anybody else normally would. He seems like a good boy. And I am fairly confident that he has courted Miss Markle for long enough to know what he's doing. So I'm sure if he thinks she's nice, then she is. I'm sure she's lovely. But I don't know anything about her personally. There we go. That's that's my official celebrity opinion on the news. Like my like my opinion would matter. Do you think Harry's been sitting there going, oh, I wonder if Carla Jenkins approves? Oh dear. I do wish she'd do a live stream so that we can find out whether she actually cares. Sammy the Seal says hilarious thumbnail. I was like, ah! <laughs> Frightened the life out of Caroline the other day doing that. Right. I think I'm done. I think I'm going. I'm going to list this stuff. I'm going to send it up on my pulley. I'm going to photograph it. I'm going to put it away. Chris Gotts, you've arrived just as I was saying goodbye. <laughs> Good morning. Good afternoon, Chris Gotts. Is it? No, it's morning. I don't know what time you got up, Chris Gotts. I'm assuming you've been out to the car boot cell at the crack of dawn because it's still morning, mate. But it's nice to see you. I don't think I've seen you in here before. Um, presumably because I don't say anything worth saying, but now you're here. Nice to see you. 
Oh, Sib K, question. He's still trying to think of a question, mate. And there goes the cat in the background again. Paul Mosley's just come in. Good morning, Paul. I'm about to go, mate. I'm pretty much done. And Ryan says, I'm packing now so he can chill later. Yeah, I'm going to list now. Send up, pick down, pack. Show us the kitty again. She's around my feet somewhere. Threatening to rip my leg off. Sib K, excluding Ryan, if you could look after another animal, what species would it be? <laughs> I don't know. I like dogs. Dogs are dogs are the best animals. They just are. They're gobby and they fart a lot and they molt everywhere. But they really, really love you. I mean, I was sitting on the edge of the bed this morning because my head was, I was sitting on the bed and I was like, and I had a bit of a sniffle as well. Not crying sniffle, but like a runny nose sniffle. And I sat on the edge of the bed going, and the dog, bless him, came in. He's got his snout in there going, what's wrong with you? You all right? I'll sort you out. What's the matter? Cat didn't care. Cat sits on the side of him and goes, oh, shut up, bloody sniffing woman. Question, if the royals brought something for me, would you sell it to the news as a story? No, I wouldn't. I think everybody's entitled to a private life, bless them. Albus needs a mention. Why? Do, uh, Albus is my rabbit. Albus Dumbledore is the rabbit in the back garden. Apparently he needs a mention. There we go, he's had one. And Chris Goss has been up since five. Good, good man, that man. Not been to the car boot cell, mate? Just, just, just lurking. Show us the rabbit. The rabbit's in the back garden where the rabbit lives. It's not coming in. But yeah, I like, I like dogs. Dogs are the best. Aren't you? Yeah, they're both flat out and snoring now. They're um, completely bloody useless, both of them. Lex Oliver says, I once has had Michelle... Oh, I can't speak. Sorry, I got the wrong teeth in. I once had Michelle McManus buy something for me. Want to know what? Yes, I do want to know what. Having just said that everyone's entitled to a private life, now I want to know what Michelle McManus bought from you. And Adam says the dog was just checking that I was still alive so they will still get fed. I don't feed them. They're not my dogs. Ryan says, I'm a Leo, Siv. Can't you tell with my feistiness? Me too, Ryan. Now, when's your birthday? I wonder if, wouldn't it be weird if we were separated at birth? I think you're younger than me. I don't think we were separated at birth. How much do you normally spend at the car boot? It depends when. Today I spent less than 20. Last last time I went, I spent about 30. In the summer, I can spend 70 to 80. I never spend more than 100 because I'm tight. Chris Scott's also a Leo. Is that 12th of July or 12th of... That would be 12th of August, because I am I think I'm at the beginning end of the Leo bit. Are you 12th of August, Ryan, is that right? Yeah, Chris Gotts is a Leo. Sib K, if I mix up silly and semi-serious questions, she'll never leave. <laughs> Elaine is a Leo as well. Do you think we're all Leo? So Ryan's the 12th of August. I know somebody else is 12th of August, but I can't think of who. Elaine's a Leo as well. I'm the 24th of July. We're still waiting to find out what Michelle McMahon has bought. Lex Oliver is also a Leo. Maybe it's a thing. Maybe if we actually did a kind of a survey, we would discover that most resellers are Leos. Maybe. Elaine is the 23rd of July. If you'd gone one more day, Elaine, you'd have been born on my birthday or I'd have been born on yours, depending on which of his is older. I am the 24th of July. Lex Oliver is the 31st. Karen's a Scorpio. So she's just completely disproven my uh, my theory. Deb Stevens and Aries, but you're not a reseller, Deb. So so you don't you can, you can't disprove my, the my, my theory. Adam Kelsey said it would be normal if you were separated at birth, but Siamese adult twin resellers would have been a little bit clickbaity. <laughs> Daisy May is a Libra and a Scorpio. How are you both? Are you, were you on the cusp? Uh, Andrea is a Scorpio. Missy moves a Capricorn. This has just basically become star signs are us. Chris, we are all stinkers born to have sex. What have I missed there? Who's, who's stinkers born to... What the heck? <laughs> Again, with the turning over two pages at once. I've, I've, I've missed completely. I have totally missed it. What did Michelle buy? I don't know. I don't know. I can't even remember who it was who said they sold something to her. Who was it who said they sold something to Michelle McManus? Lex Oliver. Lex Oliver. Calling Lex Oliver. Michelle McManus bought nipple tassels. Good God. Well, whatever makes you happy, eh? Whatever makes you happy. I, I just, I, I, don't. I can't imagine it. And Lex Oliver made them herself. There we go. With it to dust her knees. Now, Andrea, now, Andrea, those of us with vertically challenged breasticles take exception to that. <laughs> Ha ha ha. 
Oh dear. I've got a perfectly good bra and that's all that matters. <laughs> Deborah Stephen says, who is she? She was um, Michelle McManus, which it was X Factor or, or The Voice or one of those things, I'm sure. Special order. <laughs> right, I must go. I've been saying that I was going for about 15 minutes now and, and we've gone off onto a random mystery tour of Michelle McManus's boobs and and who's which star sign I don't know how that no Peter Kane address was the other one Andrea says wasn't she Peter Kane address no that was um Geraldine Geraldine McQueen was Peter Kane address Michelle McManus was an actual female and she was a delightful female who if she's watching I'm sorry Michelle Sib cases I sold some items to someone who lived in on a on a ooh million pound house. What's on a ooh million oh a seven million pound house? How did you know? Did you go around and stalk their house to see whether they were entitled to buy your stuff? Karen's off back to cleaning. When you finish your cleaning, Karen, you pop round here, love, and I'll give you a list and just start you off nicely. I'm going. I keep saying I'm going. I'm actually going. I want you all to have uh, stop wait. Look. I want you to do what I want you to do. I want you all to have a fantastic Sunday. I hope that your ka are plentiful, that your packaging is easy and that you don't fall through the loft hole. And I hope that you hope the same for me. <laughs> Have a lovely Sunday, everybody. Have a great week. I will speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs>